This is Twit. I was a little scared of this. Lisa said, hey, did you see that uh, the Canadian FCC, the CRTC, wants to regulate podcasts? I said, what? Uh, no, they say we're not going to regulate podcasts. We're just taking a major step forward to modernize Canada's broadcasting framework. They are asking streaming services with revenues of $10 million or more to register with the Canadian government by the end of next month. The CRT. You'll, you'll have to add uh, some Canadian content if you want I'm to be worried. Uh, available in Canada. Exactly. That's what the CRTC does with broadcast in Canada. Look, we all love Brian Adams. Just plow, throw him on a lot more. It'll all be fine. Uh, we're well, going to hear a lot more Anne Murray citizen, and Gordon so Lightfoot on the, uh, on the uh, network. It's the wreck of the Edmund <laughs> Fitzgerald. He's the same. He's bigger than most. <laughs> you know. But then you got to pay the licensing for the music. Did you I, uh, used to jet back and forth to Canada, Leo? Yeah, yeah, I did. I went to Canada one week every month for a long time doing... Uh, really? I was, so we were doing Canadian content. So this people who aren't maybe familiar with this, the Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission, which is their FCC, has a requirement uh, that there be a certain amount of Canadian content on all of their broadcasting, like a lot. And uh, a limited amount, because they're worried the Americans are just going to come over and it's going to be Johnny Carson all the time. So uh, when I would go up, uh, after Tech TV, I went up and did Call for Help and then later Lab with Leo uh, for Rogers, the big Canadian cable company. It was Canadian content because I was the only American. I was, everybody else was Canadian. And as long as I had Canadian co-hosts, I had to have two. And Canadian employees, and it was shot in Canada and all that, it counted. And so they were very careful. We, you know, when we brought Steve Gibson up, they said, "Well, he's not here. He's just a temporary." <laughs> In fact, the uh, when you go through the border, they say, "You're not making money up here, are you?" <laughs> I would say, "If you saw my paycheck, you'd <laughs> working know. for Rogers." <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, you know, they say, "No, we're not. We're we're not going to. No, we're not going to register podcasters." Um, Online services that offer podcasts, this is from their own fact, must register. But individuals who use social media to share podcasts don't. <laughs> of course not. What? <laughs> Online services that only provide video game services or audiobooks. No, you don't have to register. Uh, we are fortunately under 10 million a year. <laughs> I never thought I'd say thank God for that. Uh, so we don't have to register. But I, that makes me really nervous that they are kind of saying, well, oh. the first step is registration, right? Don't, don't you only have to do that if you're, oh, I see. So even if you're not Canadian, but your material is available in Canada? If No, you have to, here's the, here's the criteria. Online streaming services that operate in Canada offer broadcasting hmm. content and earn $10 million or more. So, we so uh, you're we, okay. We're off the hook, yeah. Good, okay. But I feel, but I know a lot of Canadian podcasters, and I think they're, yeah. they're reasonably, quite reasonably worried. Here in the U.S., the FCC only regulates our national airwaves, radio and television going through the air, as it should be. It doesn't regulate cable. That's why Netflix <laughs> can have a show called Naked Dating. Uh, they don't, they don't regulate that stuff. But uh, I would, and I, and they certainly don't regulate podcasts. But I would, and by the way. There's no content on here. We bleep out bad words. John, our moral conscience, John Slanina, make sure that nothing, you know, uh, salacious goes out over the air. Um, but we don't do that because the FCC says we have to. We do it because we just want to make sure kids can watch and their parents don't get upset. But I would hate for the FCC to start weighing in on podcasts. That would be very bad, don't you think? <laughs> this, re this reminds me yeah. of when uh, a friend in Alaska is a singer, uh, Marion Call, and she had a new album come out. Christmas songs and I put it on and my then I think seven or eight year olds in the room and it's like da 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 da, -da yippee ki yay mother I'm like wait whoa that? that's not <laughs> Christmas Eve and I was like wait a minute and then I'm like oh it, I she actually warned me I just didn't read the it was from print her album. it's from Die Hard my friend it's a quote it it's is a, a quote <laughs> it is a it's tradition art. a Christmas tradition in our house absolutely in I fact missed I would there's a bar down the road that has a it's an outdoor bar. We love it. We went there last year for a Christmas party. They have, they redecorate the whole thing. The, all the waiters are dressed as Santas. And they have drinks that are suitable for the holiday. Uh, like Santa got run, run, run over by a rum toddy. 
And they have one that was quite good, the Yippie Kaye Mother Bleeper <laughs> cocktail. And we're looking forward to going back there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can't wait. Do they have the, uh, there's the Die Hard, there's the Christmas ornament that you have to get with him, with the building and everything? No? All right. I don't have that. Pretty good. I'm just Pretty surprised great. Marion Call put out an album called Yippie Kaye. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's, and you know, in the thing, it says explicit lyrics in the title track. I just didn't read. Oh, mm -hmm. I just opened it up. She's great. She's a wonderful singer. I now She's wanna, the one who told I now want to buy it. I'm, I'm ready. She, she, Lovely voice, wonderful person, um, and she's the one who told me I interviewed her once for a podcast about doing being a creative, independent artist, and this will terrify sh everyone to the marrow. She said, apropos of Spotify and everyone else, I am competing against all music ever made. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, it's Lord. All and I, she said that, and I felt my spine just fall out of my body, but it was, she's right? No. Uh, it's called the internet, uh, and it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've found thing. that out the other day. Uh, when it's always the challenge of books, right? Is that every sure. book is competing for shelf space against oh every other God. book ever produced? Yeah. Whereas at least it's, you know a week a weekly podcast, there's, there's only that week's podcast to compete against. Well, can <laughs> I sidebar with you for one second? Which is, I read a thing the other day about the long tail, and I always thought the long tail was great and had a flawed concept, but I didn't realize that Chris Anderson had. I guess he'd not repudiated it, but the long tail is great for aggregators. It's terrible for publishers, worse for yeah. authors. And, yes. uh, and it's like, you know, it doesn't matter if you sell, uh, it's a great for Amazon if they sell a million, one or one copy of a million books. It's not good for the author that you got one copy, so yeah. it's only one copy. Yeah, it's great for the consumer, it, terrible for the people producing it, which in the end is terrible for the consumer. So it's, uh, it's this, a real Leo, challenge. This from Investopedia is the definition, a business strategy that allows companies to realize significant profits by selling low volumes of hard-to-find items to many customers instead of only selling large volumes of reduced number of popular items. So, well, Leo, I, wasn't wasn't it on on the show last week or the week before that uh, you guys were talking about the the long tail and streaming services removing content because yes. uh, I think there was, I think there was a, a, a stat that the more you have more content you have on the service. People, people start to oh. just not make a decision and just watch nothing at all. Yes. They yeah, get the overwhelmed over, by the over choice. Decision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Docking that. the long tail. Yes. There you go. A, a, oh, flog, is it? Uh, docking the it? long tail. Do you have the phrase docking a tail? I, I think yeah. it's not. We really have it. Here. If you've ever docked a tail, you know. Bobbing? Well, my, I guess my, my, my dog has a dock tail. Dock tail, yeah. That's ask Jason Snell. He raised horses as a kid. Yeah. So, uh, really? I didn't know. He has that. all kinds of words. Oh, all right. Come join us on This Week in Enterprise Tech. Expert Coast and I talk about the enterprise world, and we're joined by industry professionals and trailblazers like CEOs, CIOs, CTOs, CISOs, every acronym role, plus IT pros and marketeers. And we talk about technology, software, plus services, security, you name it, everything under the sun. You know what? I learn something each and every week, and I bet you you will too. So definitely join us. And of course, check out the twit.tv website and click on This Week in Enterprise Tech. Subscribe today.